So we're going squatching. We're going squatching, bitches. You gotta stop talking. <laughs> welcome back. I'll give you the three, two, yeah. one. Next yeah. Uh, sorry, I am seeing spots though. But welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am Josh. I continue to be Lennon. I said the wrong thing, but I'm sticking with it. <laughs> well, this is t- don't touch my Sasquatch. We're all fucked up, but we're gonna so plow through up. right there. All right. We explore controversial topics with energy and a good laugh. We're two guys, I think, that <laughs> have a love and passion for these topics. Things that you may have heard of, but don't know the full story of yet. We're here to tell you those stories. Share our opinions and t- let you come to your own conclusions. Not tell you your conclusions. <laughs> tell you your opinion. <laughs> we'll do the research, and that way you don't have to. So keep your minds open to the possibilities that things may not always be as they appear. And speaking of not always being as they appear, this yeah. week we dive into the mythology of Sasquatch's coldest distant cousin, and, the in, and his introduction to the Western world. Weighing in at seven foot six, 500 pounds with an undefeated record, he's been fighting the good fight out of his hometown in the Himalayas since the dawn of time. His first victory coming over Alexander the Great in 300 BC. We would now like to introduce to you the Yeti. Here he is. I tried my best fighting voice. <laughs> it was good. I, like I was. Really feeling it, and then I flipped up a line, and I was like, "Just switch it. Fine, just switch it. <laughs> play by play. I can fix it in the edit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, but yeah, we're talking about yeah, the no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It was good, man. The Yeti today. Yeti, and we have uh, only touched on Sasquatch, so it's time to branch out to his cousin. Yeah, his cousin. One of them. Now, There's I learned. <laughs> I learned something. I knew the Yowie was in Australia, but I didn't know the uh, the other. Australian one. The Yahoos. <laughs> that old Yahoo over there. Uh, the stepbrother to the Yahoo. It's the Yahoo. So when we do uh, Yahoo, yeah. should we do Yahoo and the Yahoo? The Yahoo Yahoo. <laughs> the Yahoo Yahoo's. Uh, the episode will be entitled Yahoo. The Yahoo Yahoo Conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> which is which? Well, the short one's tall. Uh, UFO or UAP? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> Okay, well, fuck the Yahweh for now. Let's talk about the Yin Yeti. The Ying. <laughs> I think that's in China. <laughs> the Ying. <laughs> so, uh, Lennon? The Yeti. I throw it to you, my friend. Like a Bigfoot on a Segway. We're going to do that again. No, I throw it to you. Get back. All righty. My turn to do what? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to build a pyramid, paint some paintings, and start a revolution. Get ready for Lennon's History Corner. Uh, if I muted us, you would have tried talking and then talked over when I unmuted us. <laughs> Listen, that was right? your punishment. <laughs> Every single time. I'm usually talking during the intro, but I know when to stop talking. I, I, I flubbed up on that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, do. <laughs> I don't even know what I say. You, remember you did it on the other one we had to restart? Yeah, shut up. Shut up. You just plowed through this one. Oh, we weren't going to restart. Let's just go. Yeah, you know? we're going. We are going. Okay. Lennon's history corner. What are we talking Welcome about Welcome to the Himalaya Mountains. Well, the year was 1935. You're cold. I'm you're cold. at a high altitude. And okay. you realize you're being stalked by a creature. You can hear the crunching of snow behind you, but you're too afraid to peek over your shoulder. I was wondering what that noise was. I didn't was, think that was you. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make the... Sounded uh, like someone like scooby doo sneaking <laughs> on the floor. Yeah. Well, that's how I picture the Yeti. It's just like... <laughs> ring, ring. Just like tiptoeing through life. Uh, old man Smithers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for your meddling kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, love yeah. I, mean, I always love your gas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking kids. <laughs> But you're too afraid to peek over your shoulder. I sure am. You mustered the courage to look behind you once his stench has found its way into your nose hole. <sighs> you turn to find blocking out the sun a tall, shaggy, white, furry, furred ape man. I thought you were about to say dong. <laughs> <laughs> Thush. <laughs> What's this on my shoulder? You hold up a finger for him. 
You hold up a finger for him. One moment, please. To signal to wait a moment <laughs> before he rips you to shreds. And then you whip out your handy dandy DTS cast field guide and flip to the Yeti section. Lick your finger. Flip, 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 flip. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Y, so you got to go to the back of the book. So you just <laughs> throw all the alphabet. I know. If you were smart, which obviously, if you're going through the front of the book to the back. <laughs> <laughs> you go for the back of the book. Well, you see, the chapters are aliens, yeah, Bigfoot, yeah, Yeti. That's yeah. just three chapters. No, That's it. No, no. Fuck paranormal. Okay, hold up. We're in the the Amityville house. What do we do? What the fuck, guys? Well, where's this classified? <laughs> guys, speaking of which, there is a uh, haunted house I would like us to go to. That's around us. Yeah, I've been to Grandma's house. Wink. <laughs> it was it was sent to me by someone. I really okay. want to check it out. Anyways. Okay. I just want to get is that how, out. How far of a drive is it for us? I don't know. We'll look at it off. We're not going to waste these people's times okay. by yeah. Why semantics. would we give them something for them to look forward to? No, no, I'm no, no. Kidding. Kidding. They would be able to find us then. Oh, gotcha. I, already. We're, oh, we're triangulating. <laughs> Math. Yeah. So, Suck it. Um, as I was saying, when I find my place again. You were sticking a finger up the Yeti's butthole. Uh, we put the finger up to tell him to wait a minute. You pulled out your DTS cast field guide. You flipped yeah. to the Yeti section. You're fucked. <laughs> and I'm I'm scrolled down to the next page somehow. <laughs> That's getting caught. And what do you see on that page? So in this section, yeah, you read that the Yeti, or the Abominable Snowman, has been in folklore and legends for centuries in Nepal, India, and Tibet. Yes, sir. In many spiritualities of the region, the Himalayas were regarded as sacred... And those in the area put many beliefs into the creatures it held. Mm. Very spiritual place and people. The chemo. That that's the uh, one of the indigenous indigenous tribes' name for it. Chemo. C H E M O. Yes. Sorry. I'm just fucking. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that. Well, now you do. You learn something new yeah. every day. Bring the more you know. Perfect. Um, the Yeti. Yep. The Hakimo uh-huh. is one such creature of legend in these cultures. The fuck is a Hakimo? I don't know. That's what you just said. I said Kimo. Oh, I you not said Hakimo. I thought you said Hakimo. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. <laughs> well, that's not what I said. Now we're in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> we're all over the place. We are international. <laughs> Internationally known. Um, while some feared it, with the utmost caution, others saw it as another creature roaming this planet as we do. Walking aimlessly around, eating to survive, and dying to be returned to the soil others tread over. Sorry, bringing it back up, we find that this creature has origins varying from culture to culture. But all with a similar vibe. There's a hairy giant mountain man in them there hills. There's a mountain devil. There's a good damn mountain devil. <laughs> that was such a half-ass, <laughs> half-ass attempt. Didn't have any energy for it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm saving that for the uh, episode. We gave all the energy to our Patreon. Everybody, listen to Patreon. No, we didn't. Let's go. Um, we gave half the energy to Patreon that we did here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Bringing it back get, up, I said. Get, get it? Because it's a half hour opposed to an hour episode. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, that hop are here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the origin of the term Yeti is thought to be derived from either the Sherpa word for small man-like animal. Mm. Yeah, te. <laughs> <laughs> That's from a baby that couldn't actually say Yeti. Yeah, te. Yeti. I like that name. I, so, with some cultures, that sounds fucked up. With some um, languages and stuff, I can, as most people do, you can do an accent so you kind of understand their basic, yeah. how they pronounce letters. Yeah. I don't know how the Sherpa pronounce Y E H dash T E H. Yeti. Yeti. Assuming it, it is actually, and I'm. Overthinking it. It's probably Yeti. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, or their word for bear, which is Medi. M E T I. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that ties into later. Let's go. Uh, Massachusetts establishment to intercourse. <laughs> Massachusetts? What? The Medi. <laughs> Medi. Oh, I didn't even fucking think of that. Oh, gotcha. Massachusetts gotcha. Institute of. What? No, it is. Uh, I forgot it already. <laughs> It was an off the cuff, it's and it's already gone. In pre Buddhist Tibetan culture, a mm-hmm. faith was practiced called Ban. Ban Ban. Ban Ban. I love Ban Bans. B O N. I don't like Ban Bans. Is that the sponge candy thing? Josh doesn't know. 
Josh has never had a bonbon. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> if you smell, Josh is cooking. That was a good uh, John Cena impression. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It was Superfly Snooker. Uh, never heard of him. Jimmy. <laughs> now we're just naming wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this faith, they worshipped a hunting god. Mm-hmm. Yep. A being known as yes. the Glacier Being. Yep. The Glacier Being is said to be the ruler of the forest and all the creatures who inhabit it. Yeah. You just saying, yeah, after every sentence I say. You'll be hearing this a little more later. <laughs> ah. No, you're fine. Keep going. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. The glacier. It's caveman Lennon doing his vowels. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Many rituals and practices were done in the name of the glacier being, starting with an annual sacrifice. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> As a way to ensure the safety and protection of the glacier being. Get it. Talk it. An animal would be sacrificed. Get it, talk it. An animal would be sacrificed, sacrificed, and placed belly up for prime optimal access to those intestines. Mm. Those are very important. Don't fuck this up for me. <laughs> While slowly playing, playing what? A banjo? <laughs> you were like, <laughs> so good. Toy. <laughs> <laughs> then while slowly saying a prayer the animal's intestines were carved out and draped over the animal's head well that's and thus you are protected for the year from the hunting god the glacier being just drape food over your head no animal intestines you didn't listen to me did you <laughs> no, i'm just kidding no that's food for the yeti man there you go man like totally dude other rituals required the use of the being's blood, which mm-hmm. gave proof that the being was a tangible creature that be- they believed they could reach out and grab, and not just a being atop Mount Olympus or a guide who takes you on a boat to the underworld. Ooh. Good callbacks to nothing. In Tibetan folklore, <laughs> Good callbacks to nothing. <laughs> in Tibetan folklore, the legends of these creatures are much more dark. The Yeti is a dangerous creature and should be avoided at all costs, no matter what. Travel with a fat person because you'll run faster. I'll be our designated fat person for our expedition. No, you won't. For science. (laughs) No, you won't. Stop it. The Tibetan stories aimed at children would be told by the elders of the community to all gathered. The shaggy ape man with enormous footprints is not to be trifled with. No. You don't fuck with him. He is said in these stories to carry... the only enormous thing he has. Big hands. Big hands. And a big old afro hat on top of his head. <laughs> he's got a big old Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> he's got the David Chilters hat. No, no, the other guy, Sukalos. Uh, no, I can't remember the guy's name. Whatever. Stinky he, Pete. I think he's <laughs> Stinky Pete and the Goofy Bunch. Uh, <laughs> I also don't know if he says Sticky or Stinky Pete, but either way. <laughs> and the goofy buns. <laughs> just so off the cuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if I was really thinking about it, I would have said the sticky bun bunch. <laughs> the goofy bunch. Turn a fuck. Oh boy. Um, he said in these stories, the Tibetan stories. Okay. He said to. Carry. Who, Elvis? He's said to yeah, carry yeah. a stone weapon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know about that. I've never really heard stories of Bigfoots using tools. No, but I've heard but him throwing rocks. Yes. I mean, if they're as smart as assumed, then I'm su- sure they could figure out a... A rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just, oh, they picked this thing up and I just throw it at you. <laughs> Got it. There we go. Easy peasy. Beautiful. Cover girl. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. Oh, <laughs> the message of these stories for all to part with was yeah. that you should not approach wild animals. That's very true. Very Thus true. And the edutainment portion of the Tibetan stories. Ooh, we got the edutainment again. <laughs> my favorite episode of Mr. Rogers was the one where he told us not to fuck around with werewolves because they like the taste of human meat. Really? That's a thing? Yeah. Well, I got to ask you a question. Oh, okay. Won't you be my neighbor? 
<laughs> Not if he's a werewolf. Ooh. We should do an episode. I'm just kidding. We should do an episode on where. Oh, wait, we did. The first meeting of the Yeti in Western culture mm-hmm. came in 1921. A reporter for the Calcutta Statesman named Henry Newman was writing an article Mm -hmm. about a British expedition into the Himalayas. The expedition was led by Lieutenant Colonel C.K. Howard Berry. I thought you were going to say Lieutenant Dan. (laughs) (laughs) It was led by Lieutenant Dan. It's a little difficult in a wheelchair there, Lieutenant Dan. (laughs) No, that's how Lieutenant Dan lost his fucking legs. Was it? Yeah, he just... (laughs) Like Deadpool. It's more funny to think... It's not funny. I'm not even going to say it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The expedition was led, like mm-hmm. I said, by yep. Lieutenant Colonel C.K. Howard Berry. That's the party began to see movement above them and witness mm-hmm. beings at an altitude in excess of 20,000 feet. <laughs> Chewie was up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I went with Chewie. Uh, when the party moved up to where the movement was seen, they found large footprints in the snow larger than what any human could make. Yes. Let alone why the fuck would some big-ass dude be on top of the mountain and say, yeah, I'm going to prank them. But how? Better take off my shoes and make a normal ass human footprint. Hey, you never know. The Sherpa guides on the expedition told Lieutenant Colonel C.K. Howard Berry that the prints were made from the Meto Kangmi. The Meto Kangmi. Yep. Is that a bear? Saying that, quote unquote, that the tracks must be that of the wild man of the snows. Meto Kangmi. Meto translate to, translates to unwashed. And Kangmi translates to man bear or snowman. Unwashed man bear mm-hmm. or snowman. Hmm. Um, it was I had that, no joke for that. I was trying to think. It, I mean, it's cool. Unwashed man bear. Unwashed man bear. Stinky. Uh, it was then that Lieutenant Colonel C.K. Howard Berry conveyed this information Just to. Just call him Lieutenant Berry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Lieutenant C.K. Howard Berry. <laughs> Port for duty, sir. <laughs> it was then that he conveyed this information to the reporter. Aha. Uh-huh. Newman, the reporter, <laughs> Newman, the reporter, mistranslated Lieutenant Colonel C.K. Howard Berry's detail of the name Meto Kangmi. He instead wrote Meto to mean abominable instead because it sounded better. Ah. Then we get the name Abominable Snowman. Beautiful. So he writes this article, Gas Meets Fire. Uh, the Western world in the years to come erupted with... Um, Syphilis. Close. No. <laughs> the article comes out in the Western world, and everyone's like in a craze now, just like the saucer mania. Mm-hmm. Um, they want to go explore. They want to see the abominable snowman. They want to meet him. They want to meet him. Hi, Mr. Abominable. My name is Jim. <laughs> hey, uh, he's got snow cones. <laughs> yeah, they're yellow, though. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, is this lemon? Nope, nope, not lemon, not lemon. Banana. <laughs> I was trying to think of another <laughs> yellow flavored <laughs> something. Banana. Pineapple. That uh, would have been better. Oh, that makes you taste good. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Pineapple tastes good. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Westerners began climbing Everest. It's the start of the tourism and exploration obsession of the mountains by those in the world, not of the region. The first photos of the abominable snowman's footprints mm-hmm. were taken in 1951 by Eric Shipton. Oh, shit. Shipton was attempting to scale Mount Everest mm-hmm. when he spotted a set of unusual tracks in the snow at about around 19,000 feet oh, above sea high. level. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah. It's up there. It was a jackalope. Yep. You solved it. <laughs> so these foot tracks. These foot tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say prints anymore. What? <laughs> You don't like prints. You like tracks. Foot track. Foot. Trackway. Every time I say prints, <laughs> you go <laughs> the fucking artist prints. Oh, yeah. the one time I said it, yeah. yeah you've said it twice now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they saw these unusual prints. Yeah. The party followed these tracks for about a mile. Shipton had estimated the tracks to be fairly fresh, saying that they couldn't be more than 24 hours old. He's just over there, males. <laughs> just there. <laughs> <laughs> just there. <laughs> Thank you. Good ad lib. <laughs> He's just there. <laughs> He's just there. I'm to myself. <laughs> I haven't been the same since the Goofy Bunch. <laughs> 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 it's just pack up shop after that one. 
When a few in their party crossed upon the tracks a few days later, mm -hmm. they were all but lost due to snow melting. So it kind of further further proved the point that these tracks were very fresh. Right. Now, one of the guides on his expedition told him that he had no doubt that the prints were made by a Yeti. He no then, doubt. He, no doubt. No doubt, no doubt. He then went on to tell him a few years prior, him and a few others witnessed one such creature about 25 yards away. Oh, what's his name? His name is the Yeti. He's five foot. <laughs> it's Bill. <laughs> uh, it's actually Randy. Randy, Randy the Yeti. Randy came out to play. <laughs> Randy the Yeti. <laughs> Randy the Yeti? <laughs> uh, he came out of his home. Yeah. Yeah, he has a mustache. He looks like a fucking he's got one pedophile. Those, he's got one of those button-up shirts, but it's a t-shirt like what Dwight Schrute wears. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm my name is Randy. <laughs> I'll be your tour guide today. Come follow me. Come follow me. <clears throat> Let me show you a cool little hole I found. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Don't pay attention to the spikes. Um, he described the Yeti that, he, that they witnessed. Yeah. He, that the heat that... <laughs> <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. He described the Yeti that they witnessed as having a pointed head, which we've heard before with the sagittal crest. Yes, you know. yes. I always thought it was just a birthday hat. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> uh, reddish brown hair, yep. weirdly enough, mm. and it stood around five and a half feet tall. So tall! Pretty, to woo, pretty tall for a <laughs> Yeti! <laughs> God damn! <laughs> it was a big motherfucker. That's, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, now, when Chimpton and his party came across an especially decent set of the prints in the line... <laughs> you know that's in the video now. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. My beard gets caught in the mic. I gotta <laughs> sever the cord. <laughs> gotcha. I can't just pull away because it hurts. <laughs> so chopping makes it not hurt? Yeah, because I could just... <laughs> well, yeah, the beard's getting too long. Time to cut it. It is. It's, it's a little little Yeti. I had to grow it out for the Yeti episode. It's a Yeti Yeti. A Yeti. It's a Yeti Yeti. <laughs> Yeti beard. Well, when you're part of the Goofy Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> the bearded Yeti. All right, Goofy Bunch. Goofy L. When Chipton and his party came across an especially decent set of prints in the line that they were following, mm -hmm. they snapped a picture of it, making this the first photo that the Western world had seen of the creature's existence. Woo! Of the foot tracks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the foot tracks. Um, <clears throat> that picture, uh, if you look up. Yes, I will. And yeah, I know you're probably going to put the video. Um, you can look Possibly. up Shipton, mm -hmm. uh, Yeti print, and uh, there's a picture... You have, he has his ice pick next to it in the ground for... Oh, I've seen it. Yep. Yep, seen it. Yes, yeah, it's a very famous one. Um, now... It's got some ducked up toes. Yeah, it's got, got like, like one ginormous motherfucking thumb toe. No, that's one of many, right? Yes. It's not just one foot. I think so. Okay. Well, they, they followed for a mile. Okay, so it was many. All but right. that, that's like the most famous one. I'm not sure if it's the only one they took. Gotcha. But... Mm -hmm. Incredible. This is uh, this is the first, and some say the best photo evidence of the prints of the creature. Mm -hmm. Others have different theories, but again, gas meet fire. The photo did nothing but help fuel the flames that burned in the hearts of expeditioners wanting to find these new cryptids. That would be us. Damn right. Uh, over the following half century to present day, many expeditions and hunts have been carried out, all in search of the Yeti. Yes, sir. And much like his North American cousin... The Yeti still remains elusive or purposely withheld from us to this day. But many people, as they have for centuries, have had encounters with this being or have seen evidence of the creature's presence. Yeah. And even Alexander the Great had a vested interest in them. At oh, one point... That was his first battle. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. At one point, while growing his empire close to their lands, he heard stories of these creatures and demanded he be brought one at once. But he was told that the creatures could not survive at such a low altitude. Pliny the Elder... What's that name again? Pliny the Elder. I'm guessing this is a Sherpa? Tibetan? Someone. Uh, it's a guy who wrote down the stories of this. Oh, uh, yeah. Pliny the Elder would write down, would write about the creatures of this time saying that, quote unquote, in the land of the satyrs, in the mountain that lie to the east of India, live creatures that are extremely swift, and they can run on both four feet and on two. They have mm. bodies like men, and because of their speed can only be caught when they are ill or old. Aw. Yeti so. told by Pliny the Heine. 
He died. The fourth member of the Goofy Bunch. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, yeah, he, he never got one because... Pete Best was actually kicked out, so... I did that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I shuffled the... Oh, oh, great. Another joke <laughs> cut for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> it could stay in. We're just having earthquake test. <clears throat> earthquake camp. You should throw that up. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe until we get better camp. Let's go. Um, huh? So Alexander was never able to get one because he was told they couldn't survive. Well, so thus, the first victory is one. Likely story. Likely story. Oh, you can't see this because they can't survive in altitude. Yeah. Well, we just got one and it's backing <laughs> up. <laughs> It's probably not even coming. He's over. here. He's here. <laughs> yes. Just in time. Oh, uh, unfortunately, shit. that beeping noise probably didn't even make it on the audio. People were like, "What the fuck?" There was a truck backing up, and all you hear was beep, beep. If oh, it's not on the audio. Backup beeper. Yeah. Oh, and like <laughs> Yeti's here. A Yeti on a snowmobile. We're moving on. To hey, I the- can't make that one. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> and we're moving on to some of the more intriguing tales of these sightings. Yes. Like a Yeti on a snowmobile. There he goes. So, Soka. my first tale. This is a not the musical. This is not the uh, old. The love notorious nine. This is the Goofy Bunch. Okay. <laughs> so the fifth member of the Goofy Bunch was Reinhold Messner. He did a 1980 expedition. Okay. No, he didn't do a 1980 expedition. No, he didn't. Sorry, he did many expeditions. <laughs> My bad. In 1980 is what I meant to say. All right. Reinhold Messner, a.k.a. the Michael Jordan of mountain climbing. Yeah. The Tiger Woods of golf. Yeah. The Pele of soccer. Hey, nicely done. Yeah, I tried. I heard it. Tom Brady. Let's go. What's the first? <laughs> was. Not what's. <laughs> it was not introducing a question to you guys. He was the first person to ever climb Mount Everest. At, he was the first person to ever climb Mount Everest without supplemental oxygen, meaning he didn't have an oxygen yeah, mask. Yeah. Just straight up <gasps> Himalayan air. <laughs> Delicious. Here's a fun it's so fact. So good for me. It is. It is nice and pure. Fun fact. Yeah. Like an absolute fucking legend. Okay. He lost seven of his toes in a frost. I didn't frostbite, but two frostbite in a 1970s climb. Damn. In a climb in 1970. I don't know. Either way, it sounds better. I thought you were about to say in a frostbite accident. (laughs) (laughs) He lost in a frostbite accident. Yeah. Seven toes. Seven. Yep. He only has three toes left. I was about to say five. I don't know if he's passed away, but has, had, whatever. There's three toes. That's there. fucking cray cray. You know that absolute legend. Did you know that if you, yeah, seriously, did you know if you lose even one of your toes, balance. Yep, fucks your balance right there. Yeah, especially hell. the big toe. Yeah. He, they call him old big toe. They call him big toe because he has two big toes. So <laughs> he's just big toe. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just two big toes. <laughs> oh, well, there should be a third, third one <laughs> no. in there somewhere. <laughs> no, the pinky duck. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just got this says this. <laughs> You know, when he goes to a rock concert, he just takes his shoe off. And <laughs> <laughs> Great flexibility. In his book, he stated very clearly that he saw the Yeti in eastern Tibet in 1986. Really? He did. He writes, Before 1986, I wrote in my book, The Yeti is bullshit. But then, when I saw this big animal, which I could not see exactly what it was, I understood that it was exactly matching the legend. I said what instead of was. That's why I was confused. Gotcha. Like, well, I, that didn't sound right. I follow. So the story goes, all right? Yep. I'm going to not paint you a picture like Lennon because you do a great job doing stories. Thank you. It goes, Messner was taking a walk one day. And, and when I say walk, and when they say walk, because I didn't say it, <laughs> they mean one hell of a fucking walk. This motherfucker was following a route taken by the Sherpa people centuries ago. Uh, this route was uh, 1,200 miles long. 1,000 miles. Just a short walk. Just a short, <laughs> short <risk> walk. walk. <laughs> I read that. I was like, hey, <laughs> just got to pop to the grocery real quick and get <laughs> some milk. <laughs> he was taking a walk. He was following the path that the uh, Sherpas took, uh, pe- the Sherpa people took centuries ago. It was about 1,200 miles. That's not a fucking walk. That's like 
That's a journey, that's motherfucker. That's just a stroll. <laughs> that's like from here going to Texas. On an adventure. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go for a short walk, Lenny. I'll see you in about five hours so or five from months. from here to Texas. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's about 1,200 miles, I think. Oh, great. They're putting the circles out again. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pinpointing us now. All right, we got this point, this point. Okay, we got the middle of the sea. I know oh, these motherfuckers okay. are. All right. They're in Boston. <laughs> <gasps> Wrong B. At dusk, while climbing a steep, densely vegetated slope, something large and dark suddenly stepped out in front of him. Sorry. No, sorry, sir. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Name's Randy. <laughs> Would you like a business yeah. card? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you should come check this hole out. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get a load of this hole. <laughs> you gotta check it out before they come and close it. <laughs> it's yeah. not Hold safe on a second. public. Oh, there's the Sherpa book. Watch out for the guy named Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Randy. <laughs> He'll try to show you his hole. Do not, I repeat, <laughs> do not check his hole out. He's always peddling his hole. <laughs> yeah. Sir, can I check? Can I show you my hole? <laughs> <laughs> can I help you? First off. No, no, I'm okay. I, thank you. First off, I don't, I don't want. To see your whole second off, what did you tap me with? You're really high up. <laughs> and you're uh, inexplicably missing fingers. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Randy stepped out in front of him. He watched as Randy raced along ahead of him. <laughs> you rang. Can't catch me. <laughs> so he watched as Randy raced along ahead of him. It was upright like a person. He was upright like a person, but moving faster than any human could. Darting in and out of trees. Fa, fa, fa. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see? How about this? Did you see? Uh, we should go that hole. <laughs> <laughs> you impressed yet? Uh, nothing slowing him down, not branches or even ditches. <laughs> or in this case, holes. <laughs> Oh, the visual on that's going to be beautiful. Uh, it's like little Mario. Uh, uh, for the audio listeners, Lennon was just jumping like Mario over oh, here. Oh, shit. <clears throat> All right. At one point, Randy stopped roughly 30 feet away from him before disappearing back in the woods again. <laughs> for some reason, I can't say Randy without laughing now. All right. Oh, God. I'm going back to my hole, guys. <laughs> you ready to go yet? <laughs> Fuck, God damn it. Fine, I'll go back in the woods. I'm going home. Oh, my God. My throat from laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh. Uh, to everybody that is confused right now, Randy is just my nickname for the Yeti now. Our nickname now. That's yeah, nickname. We will now always have a character named Randy. <laughs> yes. For the Yeti. We got to buy Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want this hole. Oh, or see his hole. At one point... I heard you rather have say Randy stepped out 30 feet away. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Messner says Randy was about seven. <laughs> God damn it, I can't do it. I want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue, because I can see you in my camera. Oh, uh, shit, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Messner says, it was roughly seven feet tall, hairy, extremely strong, but it was agile, too. Like most Bigfoot encounters... <clears throat> He states that it smelled awful and was making a whistling noise. <laughs> Come check my hole out. <laughs> check out the hole. <laughs> check out my hole. Anybody want to check my hole? <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> Messner was alone in the region when when and where he saw the Yeti. It was where, where when he saw Randy. <laughs> there were no <laughs> roads or people around. He was worried that the creature would return. Which it supposedly did later that night. <clears throat> I'm getting fucked up because my throat's hurting. <laughs> yeah, one, he then, at that moment, decided to hastily search for a mountain village in fear of the creature. Yeah. Randy just wanted to show you his hole. He's very down. aggressive. Really. Messner spent the better part of the next decade roaming villages, roaming from village to village. Sorry, not villages. Well, mm. it still works. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. Thanks for the change. <laughs> No, 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 no. Not villages. 
village to village. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was roaming from village to village and checking out villages in the Himalayan mountains. It's <laughs> out there, right? Mind of its own there. <laughs> I'm hypnotizing oh, you. Uh, in the Himalayan ma- mountains, searching for Randy and more stories about the Yeti. <laughs> he concluded that those that lived in villages that were only accessible by trail feared the Yeti the most and almost un- nope, almost universally believed in Randy and the Yetis. Randy and his whole. <laughs> <laughs> Randy and the Yetis. It's like a band. <laughs> He's... Is the, whole, aca- the acapella group, <laughs> Randy and the Yetis. His hole is definitely just like an eight foot deep hole that he can barely fit into, <laughs> and his head is just like forehead up sticking out. That's my can't hole. see me. This is my hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deep in this bitch. Just gotta look at my hole. <laughs> oh my lord! All right, Ooh. but in the villages, okay, I'm gonna read that line over because that was a lot of ad libbing. He concluded, Rand, no, not Randy. <laughs> nope, my bad. Randy's over. Messner concluded that those that lived in villages that were only accessible by trail feared the Yeti the most and almost universally believed in it. But <laughs> you scared me. But in the villages near the roads, the Yeti is nothing more than a legend. He wrote, The Tibetans speak of the Kimo, mm-hmm. their title for what we call the Yeti, as if discussing an everyday animal. Their word for Randy. <laughs> Yeah, they call him Kimo and we call him Randy. <laughs> Same meaning. Yeah. No, no, that's not their word for Yeti. That's just the guy's name. We yeah. call yeah, anyways. It's a Kimo. The Randy, Tibetan Randy Kimo. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Yeti. <laughs> Randy Kimo, how's it going? This is my card. I don't there you go. <sighs> call the number on the back if you want tax advice. <laughs> tax advice. <laughs> I reach wants the hole. <laughs> oh, this fucking hole. There'd be one great of a hole, one hell of a hole. It's not. <laughs> it's just a hole. <laughs> it's just a hole. Why are you covering your face? Because I'm crying. <laughs> God damn it, Randy. Fine. <laughs> Show me your hole, all right? This is it? It's just a hole. <laughs> it's just a hole. Yeah, but watch what it does. You're just standing in the hole. It covers me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me. Randy, I can see you. Randy, get the hell I'm out going. Of I'm going. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, enough from Randy right now. Oh, fuck. A Tibetan man gave Mes- Metner, Me- oh, Metner. Messner this advice. One can never find a chemo. Either you run into it by chance or you never get to see it. one. He always appears at night and only when you least expect it. Mm. Yeah, Messner states that footprints are the only concrete evidence of the Yeti and and Randy's hole. But many of the villages tell tales of abductions, attacks, thefts, and even rapes by Yetis. Oh, shit. If you want to hear some of those stories to do with Sasquatch, go check out our Sasquatch abductions episode. Yes. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I can't remember. I was just struggling to remember. <laughs> I, know, I, was trying. I think it was in the 20s. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. It might have been. Could it be? Could it be? Either way, go check it out. You'll you'll figure it out. I'll put it in the video, and uh, well, audio, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> he admits that because his, like most sightings, occurred when he was alone, that it hurts his credibility and claim to have seen one because of the lack of corroboration. Ah. I had to pause and make sure I said corroboration right. You still said it wrong. Corroboration. We're still wrong. Co- corroboration. There you go. God, that word sucks for Co-ob-a-wait. me. I got that from my mother. Thanks, Mom. I can't say cooperate. <laughs> Except she only she can't say those words when she's tired. I can't say them. Well, just that word. Does she just walk around the house like Co-ob-a-wait. 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 <laughs> Grandma, What are you doing? <laughs> Co-ob-a-waiting. Co-ob-a-wait. <laughs> You know, we had text her when she hears this. <laughs> She's going to be so pissed. huh? <laughs> She's so pissed. <laughs> who, what, nobody's going to know who she is. Later in life, though, Messner concluded that, and I quote, all evidence points to a nocturnal species of brown bear ruling those icy, r- ruling those icy terrains that during the day man believes are his. The bear can run, climb, and track far better than a man. In the end, I thought to myself, 
how could I need 12 years to come to this answer? It's so obvious. So, after spending 12 years of his life looking for a Yeti, he concluded that Randy is just a bear. <laughs> Case closed. And that that hole is just actually a den he sleeps in. No, Randy's real. <laughs> now, I have one more um, story. It's from a Sherpa's tale. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's not a book. It's not a movie. It's just what I labeled the Sherpa's tale. A Sherpa's tale. This is a story of a community of Sherpas who decided they will attempt to get revenge on a group of yetis who had been mercilessly tormenting them for some time. Their plan involved drinking a lot of alcohol and then proceeding engaging in a fight amongst themselves. The trick was that this was all an orchestrated brawl. It's all an illusion. It's an illusion. (laughs) Not a real one. Their hope was that the Yetis would follow suit. For some reason, they thought if they started fighting, the Yetis would be like, fuck yeah, that looks fun. <laughs> Randy, Randy, bar fight. Randy, Rand- he's stuck in his hole. Let's go over here. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Randy in his hole. So God damn, Randy. Randy, <laughs> Randy, come on, we're fighting. <laughs> Chuck's here. You've always wanted to hit Chuck. <laughs> We're fighting, Randy. I'm coming. Wait. Oh, fuck. I ate too much. My ass is stuck. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Randy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> well, sure everybody is whole, but he can't get out of the damn thing. <laughs> Randy's whole. <laughs> so they were hoping that the Yetis would follow suit. Okay. And wind up actually destroying one another. Yeah. But thanks to Randy. <laughs> <laughs> he never showed up. The, and there was an odd number. And you know what they say. Odd numbers fight. of Yetis can't fight. <laughs> well, they were hoping that they would destroy each other. This plan didn't succeed, though. In the end, the wise Yetis were not fooled. And instead of defeating each other, they continued their expedition higher up to the mountain, wrecking havoc. That's what it says. I'm going to guess it's, it's wreaking havoc. No, havoc's the name of one of the yetis. Wreaking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> it was causing havoc and even more Sherpa communities. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, God. It just cuts to the top of a mountain. There's like six of them just beating the shit out of one yeti. Ow! <laughs> Fucking havoc. <laughs> just wrecking havoc. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for feeding Randy all those cakes. <laughs> he couldn't join the goddamn fight. <laughs> so, Randy couldn't come to the fight. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and you know how much Randy loves him. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh, fucking Randy. <laughs> it's gonna be like 15 minutes of us just crying. <laughs> <laughs> His pudgy ass got stuck. Never pick him a cake again. Oh, you know. Holy oh, fuck! People watching the video are gonna be like, they're crying. Oh shit! Uh, we love, we just love Randy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> he couldn't come to oh. you. You know how much he loves to fight. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sherpas think, <coughs> think they were too dumb. Or not dumb. They thought they were too smart. And what happened is Randy just couldn't get there. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> we can't fight. All right. <sighs> All right. All right. So that was the tale. The Sherpa's tale. Of the Sherpa and Randy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have any more stories about I do. Randy? I do have another Fucking story about Randy. Randy. You know this is going to be a theme. we got to get sure to say Randy or something. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Randy's all. <laughs> Randy's <laughs> all. <laughs> and just the top of a Sasquatch head poking up. Oh, that's great. I'm going to draw some shit up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, I almost pissed my pants there. <laughs> <laughs> I almost stopped breathing. Oh, the last episode, I punched myself in the dick. This one, I almost pissed myself. 
Okay, what's, what's uh, your last story? My last story is on Colonel John Hunt. Ooh. Whoa. Huh? John Hunt? John Hunt? <laughs> did you did you just talk about John Hunt? No, I didn't talk about John Oh. In the 1950s, he was attempting to scale Everest. Mm-hmm. And by attempting, I mean he done dare attempted. Wow, very good. <laughs> did he succeed, though? Um, I don't know, because we're not talking about his climb. Fuck that guy. Many sightings Look. of the creature come yeah. to uh, the Western world through secondhand accounts from Westerners who have traveled and returned. Mm-hmm. Due to the... Cl- <clears throat> <laughs> due to the what? You heard me. <laughs> the uh, due to the seclusion and spirituality of the due people the of the clit, Himalayas. <laughs> Randy didn't show up. <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> he strictly bans it. <laughs> um, due to the seclusion. <laughs> That's the big one. It's <laughs> 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 the big one. <laughs> Due to the seclusion and spirituality of the people of the Himalayas, most of the sightings are kept within the community because why would you report something to the outside world that your culture has observed and acknowledged for centuries? Right. That's the norm for you. See, one such secondhand account comes from from Colonel John Hunt in his book on his 1953 expedition of Everest. In his recounting, he tells of the time when they stopped at camp at the Thayangboch. Yeah. Monastery. It's definitely not pronounced right. Right. Uh, there, there is um, there is like a name. They have some tough names is all I'm trying to say. I yes. couldn't think. It's I'm stuck it. on Randy right now. <coughs> God damn. In his recounting, he mm-hmm. tells of the time when they stopped for camp at the Thayanga Bokeh <coughs> Monastery. <laughs> After paying their respects in the proper customary way and, presenting, and presented the flag of their expedition to their host... Mm-hmm. They sat down with the members of the monastery for a meal. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 <laughs> Well, <laughs> not going to say it. While at the dinner, Hunt pressed the host about the Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> he lit up and looked outside the window at the expedition party's tents where they were, where we later learn mm-hmm. that this is where the event he will tell took place. Right out Sleep tight, hills. motherfuckers. Right in those hills. Uh, or those woods, I mean, sorry. <clears throat> right outside the window where the expedition Better. party had their tents set up. Yeah, we were walking. Walking. <laughs> we were walking. <laughs> <laughs> we were walking. I don't know why I turned British. Anyway, <sighs> sorry. Go Ow! That's got to hurt. It's all right. <laughs> he began to tell them of the time a few years prior in the winter when a Yeti suddenly appeared from within the thickets outside of the monastery. Want to check my hole out? <laughs> check out <a> hole. <laughs> Hey, you guys ever seen a hole? <laughs> you turned him into like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> you ever got a hole? <laughs> I can't do the fucking laugh. Whatever. The lumbering beast. Mm-hmm. Clicked at him? I don't remember what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is he trying to say? The beast was roaming. What the fuck was the last thing I said? I don't know. Uh, got... th- it happened right outside the window in the tent. Thick as the monster. Thick as a monster. <laughs> is that what you said? No. no, no. What did you say there? Thick as of the monastery. Oh, got it. I thought you said thick as a monster. I was like, wow. <laughs> Old bowling ball. He began hey. to tell them the time a few years prior in the winter when a yeti, yeti suddenly appeared from within the thickets outside of the monastery. Gotcha. The beast was roaming around outside, sometimes on two legs, sometimes on all fours. The lumbering beast stood about, ready? Five feet tall. <laughs> it was the Yowie. Well, that or I'm thinking, I mean, they aren't birthed eight feet tall. It could have been a child, Yeti. You never know. You never know. No, I do know. <laughs> I know they're not birthed eight feet tall. You, you don't know that for sure. <laughs> you don't know that. You never know. <laughs> Things that make you say, hmm. <laughs> uh, it was five feet tall and covered in all gray hair. Mm. The old monk began to act out how the beast stopped to scratch itself. I find it funny to imagine it was scratching its ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was picturing it scratching its nuts. <laughs> it played in the snow for a bit and grunted. That's a, that sounds like a kid. You know, as they do, a yeti's favorite pastime is to grab a handful of snow and just hawk it up in the air. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> that was baby Randy. <laughs> <laughs> It was then decided at the monastery to scare the creature off as it got the monks all worked up. Ha! 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 He's hey, not going. Get the hell out of here! Get the hell out of here, buddy! Huh? Want to see my hole? <laughs> <laughs> the, 
They began to blow traditional horns and just generally make a racket, it seems. And Get the hell out of here, buddy! <laughs> Before long, the beast ran away from whence it came, and... All we heard in the distance was, Hey! I found a hole, guys! Hey, there's a hole over here! It's mine! My name's on it now! <laughs> My name's Randy! <laughs> Randy. With seven A's. <laughs> exactly. Well, he's a Yeti. So that was the tale of Colonel Jonathan Hunt. I'm impressed you could say that without saying the other, because I would totally screw up and say, John, I think <laughs> we're not going to say that. Though. Yeah, yeah, just a click on that one. You know what it was. Yeah. So that was your tale, that's and my, I loved it. That's my tale. I'm going to tell you my tale. All right. Oh, actually, I don't have any more tales. I'm going to tell you right. some evidence is what I meant to say. Yeah. Let's look at the evidence. Let's analyze it. Let's scan it. Let's dissect it a little bit even. So we're going to start with the footprints or tracks to not confuse Lennon. Like Sasquatch, tracks are common evidence when it comes to Yetis. I don't know why, like the radio voice, that was kind of interesting. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One incident of tracks being found happened in April of 2019. When a team from the Indian Army was on a mountaineering expedition and sighted mysterious tracks of the mythical Yeti. The tracks allegedly measured 32 by 15 inches, and when they were spotted... Close to the Makalu base camp. This, not and, oh man, hey, I said and when they were spotted. I meant to say they were spotted close to the Makalu base camp. Okay. This is an isolated mountainous region between Nepal and Tibet. The ADGPU Indian Army Twitter account tweeted pictures of the tracks and along with the quote. <coughs> That's not the quote. <laughs> I was wondering what this was. <laughs> and along with the quote. Ah, okay. yeah. All right, all right. For the first time, and mountaineering, okay, this is the quote from the tweet. I just had trouble reading yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I got that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For the first time, an Indian Army mountaineering expedition team has sighted mysterious footprints of a mythical beast, the Yeti. Mm-hmm. Measuring 32 by 15 inches, close to Makup Makalu <laughs> Base Camp on 9th of April 2019. It's like I already said all this. Mm-hmm. The exclusive snowman that only has been seen or sighted at Makalu Baron National Park in the past. So, Basically, I read that so that we could show the pictures. Yes, yes, yes. And I gave their account. So, hey, we're covered. Legally, covered. Covered. <clears throat> well... The weird thing about these tracks when you look at them in the picture yeah, are that they're in like a straight line. Okay. So it looks like the Yeti was uh, either like trying to practice his tight rope, tight rope walking sure, or hopping on one leg. That's always fun. Or he was trying to put a shoe on. That and, too. You know, you ever get that little hopping <laughs> step when you're trying to get a shoe on? And yeah. Yeah, he was miles just hopping on that one <laughs> foot. It was old Randy again. <laughs> He's trying to put his loafers on. <laughs> this is too cold. <laughs> I'll go back in my hole. <laughs> All right, so that was one account of the tracks. <clears throat> okay. Tracks are found everywhere from Bigfoot to Yowie to Yeti to... There's one in Brazil, too. I can't remember what his name is. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but I can't remember all the names. Now let's move to the hair. Okay. Huh? Okay. <laughs> in the case... Uh, in, yeah, okay. In the case of Sasquatch, yeah. hair is sometimes found on a branch of a tree, sure. on the ground, or in what some call Sasquatch nests. DNA tests, results from the samples of hair, are often inconclusive or are from another animal. Well, in 2014, a study found that two supposed Yeti hair samples potentially came from a hybrid between a polar bear and a brown bear. Author of the new study and an evolutionary biologist at the <laughs> University at <laughs> Buffalo. What voice is that? <laughs> I don't know. I was going with it, but you got making noises. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> You're good. You're good. I couldn't. So author and uh hmm? author of a new study and an evolutionary biologist biologist. It's kind of like a biologist. Biologist at the University at Buffalo, Charlotte Lindquist, is skeptical about the possibility of some strange hybrid bear roaming the Himalayan mountains. Sure. Which I agree with. 
I am skeptical. You know, with a brown bear and a polar bear, you're just mixing together, you know? What about a koala bear? Well, I mean, what, <laughs> what brown bear is going to fuck a polar bear? Mm-hmm. The study was concluded. Nope, not concluded. It was conducted. Mm-hmm. It was conducted on nine Yeti samples, nine times, including a bone, <laughs> tooth, skin, fecal samples, and, of course, the sample of a hair. This is all Yeti stuff? Yes. Eight of these samples were found to come from either an Asian black bear, Himalayan brown bear, or a Tibetan brown bear. Oh, uh, fucking But the ninth is. sample, that one came from a dog. Ah, oh, shit. I know. I was trying to build it up. I was talking about some visual sightings. All right. Some evidence here, right? One time we saw a forehead sticking out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, it was old Randy. <laughs> Giant saginal crest. Fucking Randy. There are countless... Business of- card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a fucking hand. Bam. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. How was your day, bud? Oh, my day was good. How was your... What the fuck? <laughs> Randy? <laughs> Tax specialist and taxidermist. <laughs> Oh, and specialty about a hole. <laughs> That's almost over that one. Oh, fuck. There are countless reported sightings of the Yeti throughout the years. We have discussed a few of these earlier in the episode. Uh, all of are up for debate, mm-hmm. as we only have eyewitness testimonies to go on. Uh, but you all know the age-old saying. You good? Yeah. You know the old, age-old saying, right? Yeah. But refresh my memory. Oh, sure. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll tell you it. Home is where you don't have to wear a bra. Oh, great. Wait, no. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. That's, ah. That was for Randy. Oh, God. <laughs> where there's smoke, there's fire. All right. Yeah. 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 Lots of it. That one didn't land like I wanted it to. Oh, well. <laughs> Tibetan stories. <laughs> they haven't heard it yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I sense it. It's like, you know, the Professor X thing. Oh, man, they're not laughing. They're laughing more at Randy <laughs> pissing in a hole. <clears throat> so some Tibetan... <laughs> yeah. That's where I take a shit. (laughs) Tibetan stories. For years, Tibetans in a remote village have told stories (laughs) and are firm believers in the existence of the Yeti, Mm -hmm. a.k.a. Chimo. This helps to bring some validity to the fact that the Yeti could be a real creature. Of course... This could be a misidentification of known creatures, mm-hmm. which leads us to theories. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. You ready for it, peoples? Don't jump. <laughs> it's about to happen. We've presented the facts. It's time now to examine the evidence and give our theories. So pull up a chair for our final thoughts. <laughs> Science. Beautiful. Final thoughts time. Final thoughts. <clears throat> AKA theories as well. So misidentifications. Let's start there. Okay. I wrote bear. Often misidentified. A bear can be misidentified as a Sasquatch, a Yeti, a Yowie. Well. I don't know about Yowie. You know. I don't know Australia that well. Hair samples have come back in most cases as coming from a bear. Bears are also capable of standing on two legs, mm-hmm. which gives them more of an intimidating presence and also can give the illusion of being a humanoid because they're standing on two legs. Yeah. If in low light or at night, this could be misidentified as a tall human-like creature covered in hair. Sweet. This doesn't explain the accounts of an agile creature running on two legs faster than a human or the up-close encounters that swear that it wasn't a bear, though. Yeah. So we got both here. I don't know which. I think it's a mix of both. It's got to be. It's always a mix of both. There's always some truth Yes. to science. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about spiritual? All right, I got a little bit more into this. There's a long history of lore and mythology that, no, nope, from the local cultures about the Yeti. It may be possible that something was lost in translation, uh, maybe us Western strangers have a lack of imagination and have not fully grasped the cultural context of the Yeti. Mm-hmm. So, the main religions of the Himalayan region have a complex spiritual world filled with gods, both old and new, as well as a mountain spirit 
Not, yeah, as well as mountain spirits and river demons. These range from goddesses to minor things like guarding a river crossing or home. Sweet. According to the Lepcha, L-E-P-C-H-A, so if I butchered that, I apologize, Lepcha, or Lepka, uh, who are indigenous to the Himalayan regions, the Yeti is an ape-like glacial, glacial, ape-like glacial spirit that holds influence over a successful hunted trip. Yeah. Yeah, except they didn't have guns, so. It is reported as being seen physically, and yet it is also given mythical, myth, mythical, I was right the first time, mythical yeah. problem. <laughs> problems. <laughs> He's got problems. <laughs> mythical powers. This being was described as an ape-like creature that carried a large stone as a weapon and made a whistling swoosh sound. Now, you kind of touched on that in the beginning. Yeah. So my note here for the counter-argument okay. of a misidentif- or misrepresentation misunderstanding okay. of the lore is Native Americans um, of North America, yes. at least, talk about... Hence uh, the yeah, Americans. Yeah, Nath- <laughs> well, there's, you know. Native Americans talk about eagles, bears, and other animals they worship. Real creatures given spiritual relevance and power. Sure. So you have, for example, uh, a bear... Uh-huh. And spiritually, we know a bear is real, right? Spiritually, it means power, physical strength, leadership, and motherhood. Yes, I've seen Brother Bear. Yes. You have like a turtle, which is fertility, protecting, self-reliance, and long life. Yeah, when I think of a turtle, I think of sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fertility, baby. <laughs> we have a butterfly, transformation, grace, ability to accept change, vulnerability. We have a crow, creativity, cunning, spiritual balance, spiritual strength. We have a raccoon, likes garbage, but he's (laughs) curiosity, disguise, explorer, dexterity. Mm -hmm. And we have Randy. (laughs) Damn it. He's uh, he's dumb, secretive. Very, very, um, there's a word I'm looking for, and that's why I'm stalling. Are we really talking about Randy? Yeah, Randy. Okay. Randy, he's dumb. Yep. Intuitive. Okay. He's very good at hiding. Yeah. And that motherfucker's persistent. (laughs) Want to see my hole? No, I don't want to see your hole. (laughs) He's very persistent. (laughs) That was the whole I was looking for. That was the... Oh, fuck, uh, I love it. Yeah, anyways, whatever. I was trying to fucking think of what I was thinking, but I didn't think I think of that. So the last one being an ape-like humanoid hybrid, kind of like Sasquatch of the North American... Region, there's a lot of sightings. There's a lot of footprints. Yeah. Um, whether they're real or fake, you be the judge. A lot of hair samples. Again, real, fake, DNA. Sometimes comes in conclusion, inconclusive. Mm-hmm. So don't there know was, about that one. <clears throat> correct mm-hmm. me if I'm. Correct me if you already spoke on this. I already spoke on it. Randy's right. real. Randy is real. <laughs> <laughs> He's right outside. Um, look at little squatch is waving to him. Yeah, the squatch. And Randy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, there's also... Uh-huh. The one, there's a monastery that claimed to have a Yeti finger. Oh, I didn't even touch on that shit. Yeah. It yeah. got tested. Yeah. And it was human. Yeah. Yeah. But it was super fucking hairy, so... You be the judge. <laughs> it was that hobbit. It was, it, was, it was a short guy that was very hairy that they kept like making oh, pictures yeah, of. Whatever the fuck his name is. Oh shit, I think that was Patreon. That's right. That was Patreon. <laughs> that was My bad. <laughs> My bad. Cut it. You don't have to cut it, but that was Patreon. Yeah. Sign for <clears throat> Patreon to understand that joke. <laughs> yeah. As many jokes apparently we make. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Kinda like the Sasquatch. A lot of similarities there. Uh-huh. Maybe it's a missing link. Maybe it is a you know, um, uh, Ring Pendek? Orang the, Pendek? Gazuntite. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Gigantopithecus. There it was go. a Gigantopithecus. What did you Sorry. say before that? <laughs> did you say Orang Pendek? <laughs> <laughs> Just, we're going to wipe that clean out of your mind. This is oh, not shit. the word you're looking for. Orang Pendek? <laughs> Gigantopithecus. Yes. Maybe it's a, a descendant of that. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Um. There's a lot of yeses. I know. I'm trying to formulate my thought. While you're formulating that thought, maybe 
It is a evolutionary byproduct of the Gigantopithecus. Maybe, you know, it's a little smaller. I don't know how big Gigantopithecus was. I think it's a little smaller. It's smart. It's, I'm making shit up. You got what you're fucking trying to say? Yeah, I'm just trying right, to figure good. out why you said Gigantopithecus was small. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't say that. I said the Bigfoot was a little smaller, but that works. No, either way. Uh, as with evolutionary nature goes, yes. um, after Pangea broke apart, you mm-hmm. can see that there was there's animals mm-hmm. that are related or similar, mm-hmm. but on a, we're, are different parts of the globe, yeah, you know? Like humans. Exactly. So, you got a snow Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. You got a North American forest Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. You got a desert Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. You got a rainforest Bigfoot. And you got the Chinese Bigfoot. It's kind of cool. The Chinese Bigfoot. You got all these different... Well, Chinese ones are probably rainforest too, but you still got the Chinese one. True. Uh, I, Either yeah. way. Just don't know the name. That's yeah. all. Um, but yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you got ones from all these different... Yeah. And all these different uh, environments that adapted. It's very true. You know? Could possibly be. So, Lennon, that leads me into... And I want to hear yours first. Okay. What's your theory or thoughts on the Yeti? Real, fake? What is it if it is? We kind of already touched on it, but... I mean, what I just said is my theory. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... I think that's what happened. I think these animals are real. Just gotcha. like with the... Just like with Bigfoot here. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and I definitely believe they're all related, but they've just all adapted to their own environment. Right. So... Gotcha. Uh, and obviously, you're going to have the ones that are mistaken for different animals. Um... Sometimes you're going to accidentally trip into a hole and find one. It's fucking Randy. <laughs> you get a business card and a pet <laughs> on the back. Yeah. yeah. He lifts you right out. He's a nice guy. He's a nice, nice guy. guy. Um, but I mean, that's my theory. I think they're real. All right. So my thoughts are kind of like with the Native Americans, I feel, um, you know, how Native Americans talk about like we like I already discussed, they talk about eagles and bears yeah. and turtles and raccoons Very and spiritual. Randy. And they, <laughs> God damn it! One of these times I'm gonna say Randy and not fucking laugh. And they're real creatures, yeah. but they have spiritual meanings to them. I think that the spiritual um, version of a oh god, Lepcha, Lepka, of the Lepka, the fucking people of the Himalayas. Oh. Um, <laughs> That they're making it a spiritual animal, I yeah. feel, doesn't take away from the fact that it could be an actual animal. Uh-huh. So I think there's some truth into that. And I think that orang... I almost said orang pendak again. <laughs> what I is think, that? I don't even know. I, if it's something real, I'll throw it in the video. If it's not, I don't fucking know. I want to look it up. So I think Gigantopithecus, yeah. it is a descendant of... I think it is a descendant of Gigantopithecus. There we go. <laughs> yeah. You're talking like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> See. Um, <laughs> now a Spanish Yoda. Yoda with the Mexicans? There's Spanish subtitles on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See. Um, anyways. Yeah. I feel that it's a version of Gigantopithecus, but I also feel that that's what Bigfoot is, and it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's too too. Many, There's a lot of tales. A lot, yeah. lot of stories of it, a lot of evidence, and I don't know. Yeah. We'll never I remember. want to actually see one for myself. Ourselves. We're going to Everest. <laughs> Not the Yeti. I don't know if we'll go to Yeti town. We'll see a Squatch. I mean, there's yes. there's sightings around us. I know there are. I'm waiting for one of these days to see it. How, you know how much fucking time you and I spend outdoors in fucking summer? Yes, but not like deep in the woods. Well, in one area we do. Yeah. We even one week. heard one. Possibly. I know. Could it be? Could it be? I don't know. That's if he starts yelling to come see his hole, though, I'm going to go see that fucking hole. <laughs> going to see that hole. I got to see the hole. I got to get the business card. He only hands out 10 a year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll share one. All right? We'll, we'll fucking frame it. Randy the Yeti. Come see my hole. <laughs> come see my hole. <laughs> T-shirt ideas. We'll see. Well, maybe. Who knows? Uh, so that's my theory. Was the Yeti a misidentification of a bear? A misinterpretation based on a spiritual account from the Lepcha people? Or is the Yeti a flesh and blood creature that stalks the mountainous region of the Himalayas? Your guess is as good as mine, but that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Well, well, what? with that being said, ladies, gentlemen, Squatches, and Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Go through my hole! <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode.
If you would like to reach out to us and let us know your thoughts or your opinions, you can do so by finding us on Twitter, mm-hmm. Instagram, Facebook, and on our YouTube channel. Yes, like, subscribe. Links are in the show notes below. If you enjoy what we do here at Don't Touch My Sasquatch and would like to support us, yes, join our Patreon to get bi-weekly bonus shows, discounts on merch, exclusive Patreon-only content, and lots more. Like such Rand- as Randy's autograph. Randy's autograph and understanding inside jokes. <laughs> yes, I had that too. Uh, hit the subscribe button for auto-downloads to listen first thing every Monday morning and drop us a five-star rating or a review. Absolutely. And on YouTube, hit the bell. Hit the bell. We love hearing from you, and this helps us to grow and bring you more content for you to enjoy. Join us next Monday for our next incredible episode. You may write us, rate us, review us, but remember to always stay curious, be vigilant, and don't touch my Sasquatch. Don't do it. He's visiting Randy's hole today. (laughs) (laughs) Peace. See ya. Episode 40. Game on, Garth. Okay. We're recording. Oops, I almost just took a picture. You're just too good to be true. I like your face. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh. Josh, you hit the camera again. Oh, stop hitting the table. God damn it. Unwashed man bear. Unwashed man bear. Stinky. <laughs> there he is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Western world and the years to come would see many expeditions into the Himalaya mountains to get a glimpse or encounter with the snowmen. Someone push fast forward on London. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting audio. <laughs> <laughs> One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. Wow, oh, that was a tenor, a, a tenth. <laughs> 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 Cut that, Lennon. What'd you say? Cut that, Lennon. <laughs> oh, I heard that. Before the, long, the beast would get scurried and scurry away. Scurried and scurried away. They begin. <laughs> they begin <laughs> <like> Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Yeet! That's just my laptop. Take it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's maxing out your fucking mic. Shit happens. Randy loved it. Peace! <laughs> I want that video so bad. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Riveting audio.